first question is we've seen a lot and lot of talk around uh, you know deni in the last especially in the last one and a half two years so you know i was speaking to uh, shruti bopya uh, who is the head client engagement at bridge beep and uh, got and you know we got great insights on how what is needed to be done in deni that organizations need to do at an organizational level and at an individual level yes the fact is that these things need to come from us within right but how are you seeing it shape up in india i mean is it really really being taken seriously by the leadership in large companies or is it just a tick box what are your views on it i think diversity equity and inclusion are now becoming a reality of business right and i think most mature businesses uh, are beginning to see it well beyond a tick box right i think companies are taking diversity equity and inclusion seriously uh, for one it's no longer a nice to do people are recognizing that this adds value to the core of your business proposition a business that works closely on de and i and who looks at you know environmental social and corporate governance there is empirical evidence to prove is more successful right so it's no longer a nice to do also i think importantly in increasing polarizing times like the ones we live in it makes sense for companies to broad base their workforce so in a sense it's a hedge against this polarization right the best way you can hedge against polarization is by having people across the spectrum right whether it's gender whether it's uh, you know uh, kind of kind of multi faith or multi kind of uh, cultural organizations or even people who respect uh, the fact that people can have different sexual orientations so i think the eni is now absolutely critical to my mind most organizations are taking them very seriously for one reason is that increasingly a lot of investors are beginning to look at organization in this equity lens right so they're looking at organizations through an esg window they're looking at organizations through how good they are on de and i i think that's becoming critical the second i believe it's also good for business right if a business reflects the society in which it works in it can only work better right i would say an organization that has let's say gender parity and you know have you know let's say people from both genders at senior levels uh, is positive i think an organization that learns to respect people's different orientations or works with people across multi faiths or multi cultures i think is it works very well and therefore when i say dni i'm looking at more than just the basic gender diversity i'm also looking at thought diversity right when i ran marketing for you know fairly large uh, companies i think the best results came when you had a team that was multicultural people who came from different parts of the country or different regions because they each bought a different sensibility a different thought a different dimension to an entire you know campaign or whatever so i think dni is more than just a tick in the box i think it's it's mainstream and it has uh, you know i think over time it will only get stronger i want to take some time and comment about two other issues ananya in the context of uh, of what we're talking about one is sure. a little about uh, you know the future of the workspace and the other is of course the current little uh, you know concerns people have on the on the variant and what does it do you know one is clearly while things were seemingly getting to kind of you know getting back to the normal curve in a small manner i think this omicron variant has kind of put a little bit of a hold on plans so i would see that the uncertainty is certainly going to be part of us for the next few months right a lot of us believe that you know early 2022 we we'll resume or get back to as near normalcy as possible i think there's a little bit of a you know trepidation a little bit of a a bit of a kind of concern about how this thing works hopefully things will settle to my mind around the you know maybe the middle to the second half of 2022 and in the context of our discussion if i were to kind of look at the uh, workplace future two trends are emerging in my mind i think organizations are going to be adopting a more flexible work arrangement for their employees and also for their own benefit right so i think the ability i mean organizations will start looking at flexi flexi times of remote working of having smaller offices downsizing and possibly letting people work from remote locations so i think that's one trend that's certainly certainly going to be real and the second i think is a more widespread adoption of the gig economy i think people are recognizing that you're going to have gig workers as an essential part of your workforce right the old organizational structures where you had almost 80 90% of people on rolls barring for very peripheral kind of tasks which you outsourced i think uh, you know that is going to reduce increasingly over time 
what you're going to have possibly is a much more healthier mix of part-time contract or gig workers uh, versus a core team that's going to be you know strung together which is part of the core organization and i think we're moving definitely in that direction and therefore like i said earlier in this in this discussion uh, the onus for especially younger employees to multi skill to learn new skills uh, to get familiar with with let's say technologies of the future uh, right would be helpful like for example i know for a fact that a lot of organizations they value people who've taken courses in python saying hey if ai is of the future then someone who works in that direction i think those were some of the thoughts that i wanted right. to add on to this right.